The Apollo 11 mission stands as an enduring testament to one of humanity's most remarkable accomplishments. Many of you may recall it as the mission where we achieved the remarkable feat of sending humans to the moon. The Apollo 11 expedition witnessed the courage of Neil Armstrong and Buzz Aldrin, who etched their names into history as the first individuals to set foot on the lunar surface. However, amidst these notable figures, there was an additional astronaut who participated in the mission, although he might not be as prominently recognized. This astronaut goes by the name of Michael Collins. Collins has maintained a lower profile largely due to the role he fulfilled during the mission. Recently, Michael Collins has chosen to shed light on the eerie mysteries that the astronauts encountered during their voyage to the moon. The question arises, why has this astronaut decided to come forward now and discuss the details of the mission? What could they have uncovered or confronted on the moon that carries such an eerie quality? In this video, we delve into the disconcerting revelation made by an Apollo 11 astronaut concerning the uncanny secrets they experienced during their historic lunar mission. By subscribing to Cosmos Prodigy, makes us understand that you are enjoying the substance of our content. Neil Armstrong's memorable words as he embarked on his first lunar steps. That's one small step for man, one giant leap for mankind, have left an indelible mark in our collective memory. This utterance was deeply resonant, considering the circumstances in which it was spoken and the monumental nature of the event. Buzz Aldrin followed Armstrong, accompanying him in the exploration of this new extraterrestrial terrain. Completing the trio of astronauts was Michael Collins, who unfortunately couldn't partake in the moonwalk. His role required him to remain aboard the orbiting command module. Throughout history, the moon has captivated human fascination, prompting extensive study with the limited tools available to our ancestors. They deciphered the moon's phases, calculated lunar eclipse durations, and wove it into myths and legends. The moon's influence on tides and calendars was recognized, and some even speculated on its potential impact on mental well-being. The initial lunar missions involved unmanned probes, such as the Soviet Lunar Program and the American Ranger and Surveyor missions. These ventures yielded crucial insights into lunar conditions and geology. Each discovery about the moon fueled the ambition to send humans there, a desire that escalated during the Cold War's space race between the United States and the USR, fueled by national pride and technological competition. The Apollo program, launched in 1961, aimed to send and safely return a human to the moon before the decade's end. This endeavor demanded substantial funding and encompassed various stages of development and testing. Suborbital and orbital flights, rendezvous and docking simulations, lunar orbiting, landing rehearsals, and spacewalk exercises constituted some of the rigorous tests. The culmination of the Apollo program was the historic Apollo 11 mission, which commenced on July 16, 1969. On July 20, 1969, the world watched in awe as the spacecraft descended onto the moon's surface. The crew comprised Neil Armstrong, Buzz Aldrin, and Michael Collins. After reaching lunar orbit, Armstrong and Aldrin separated from Collins aboard the lunar module Eagle. Collins remained in the command module as Armstrong's iconic moonwalk commenced at precisely 2.56 a.m. Greenwich Mean Time. Aldrin followed suit, and both astronauts spent two hours collecting samples and conducting scientific experiments. Concluding their activities, they capped their extraordinary journey by planting the American flag on the lunar surface. Despite his relative lack of recognition, Michael Collins enjoyed a distinguished and accomplished career both as a test pilot and an astronaut. He held a significant role as the command module pilot during the Apollo 11 mission, a position that might have appeared to place him in the background. However, his importance cannot be underestimated in the grand scheme of the mission. As the pilot, Collins held the crucial responsibility of guiding and maintaining the command module, known as Columbia, which served as the mission's mothership. While Neil Armstrong and Buzz Aldrin embarked on their historic moonwalk, Collins remained behind to pilot the command module. His responsibilities were multifaceted and intricate. One pivotal duty was overseeing the docking procedure, 
ensuring the successful separation of the lunar module, Eagle, carrying Armstrong and Aldrin. Any mistake during this process could have catastrophic consequences for the mission. After the lunar module departed for the moon's surface, Collins found himself alone in the Columbia. Contrary to the misconception of his deep isolation, Collins was engrossed in a range of tasks. He monitored systems, maintained communication with mission control, and prepared for the critical rendezvous and docking procedures with the returning lunar module. In fact, Collins played a crucial role in ensuring the mission's flawless execution. The rendezvous and docking procedures were some of the mission's most challenging aspects, demanding Collins to calculate and execute precise maneuvers. The intricacies involved potential pitfalls, and any miscalculation could have resulted in the separation of the lunar module from the command module, endangering the mission and crew safety. Collins was also responsible for the maintenance of the command module, which served as their sole means of transportation back to Earth. He ensured that systems such as life support, communication, and propulsion were functioning optimally. Beyond the mechanical tasks, Collins carried a psychological burden as the intermediary between the moon-bound crew and Earth's mission control. He understood that if any mishap occurred, he would have to return to Earth alone. Despite not being able to explore the moon's surface like his colleagues, Collins remained composed and focused, providing timely and steady information to mission control. Collins also played a pivotal role in the critical trans-Earth injection TI, maneuver, which involved firing the spacecraft's engines to exit lunar orbit and head back to Earth. Some speculate about the psychological impact of his solitary time on the spaceship, suggesting that the mission must have profoundly affected him. However, what introspections did he make about his own identity and the collective human experience? What contemplations occupied the thoughts of this solitary astronaut during his moments of solitude aboard the spacecraft? As the lunar module disengaged from the ship and landed on the moon's surface with his fellow crew members, Collins remained aboard to command the ship as previously discussed. On the command module, Collins stayed above the moon's surface exclusively orbiting around it. His total time spent in lunar orbit amounted to 21 hours. During each orbit, Collins experienced 48 minutes of radio silence. Neither a word from his colleagues on the moon nor a communication from mission control on Earth reached him. In the dark, airless void, he rotated alone and in silence. Such solitude undoubtedly granted him profound contemplations. During his orbit, isolated during this portion of his journey, he described this experience as serene solitude rather than stark loneliness. Behind the moon, he was unable to communicate due to the moon's interference with radio signals. This unique situation made Collins the first person to have a first-hand glimpse of the moon's far side while circling it. Although he didn't set foot on this side of the moon, he experienced this solitude uniquely. In contrast, the Apollo 8 mission had its crew orbiting the moon, but none ventured out of the spacecraft. Hall crew members orbited together and encountered the radio silence as a group. In contrast, Collins had to wait until he reached the near side of the moon facing Earth to regain communication with his colleagues and mission control. Thus, not only is the moon's far side radio silent, but it is also devoid of radio frequency interference from human activities. This radio quiet quality of the far side makes it an excellent location for radio astronomy, as it permits the detection of weak signals without the interference from Earth. The far side of the moon also lacks a substantial ionosphere, a layer of charged particles that can affect cosmic radio sources. This absence of ionosphere contributes to the radio silence and utter quietness observed on the far side. This unique radio silence piqued astronomers' interest. In 2019, China's Chang'e 4 mission successfully deployed a rover on the moon's far side. The rover was stationed in the von Karman crater within the South Pole Aiken Basin. The mission aimed to conduct low-frequency radio astronomical observations using a small antenna. The rover relied on a relay satellite orbiting the Earth-Moon L2 Lagrangian point, a location where gravitational forces are balanced. The moon's far side is intriguing and enigmatic, offering exceptional opportunities for exploration.
Collins became the first person to experience the intense solitude that the far side offers. For him, these moments were serene interludes as he drifted in space, viewing the earth from a new vantage point. In the vast expanse of space, the silence permitted a fresh perspective, enabling him to deeply appreciate Earth's beauty. During this time, Collins must have contemplated his insignificance in the expansive canvas of the universe. Despite his intense engagement in planning and calculating the mission's success, he also dedicated time to the mission's success and the pivotal role he played in Apollo 11. Both Armstrong and Aldrin reunited with their colleague Collins in the main shuttle to commence their journey back to Earth. On July 24, 1969, the trio made a splatental preservation on Earth. He encouraged individuals to take better care of our fragile planet and cease actions that disrupt the delicate balance of nature. He held hope that one day, world leaders would share his unique perspective of Earth from space leading them to make choices that prioritize the protection rather than the destruction of our world. Moreover, the solitude he experienced during his lunar orbits prompted Collins to confront existential inquiries, triggering profound shifts in his beliefs and reshaping his worldview. In his autobiographical work titled Carrying the Fire, Collins contemplated the significance of the universe and humanity's place within it. This extraordinary journey altered his spiritual outlook emphasizing an ordered and purposeful cosmos rather than mere chaotic randomness. Prior to his space voyage, Collins was not overtly religious, but the experience of space enhanced his spiritual connection to a structured universe. Being the loneliest it's as a badge of honor, the profound privilege of this journey allowed Collins to appreciate the allure of space and ponder the fundamental questions that underpin human existence. Who are we? What role do we play in the grand tapestry of existence, and how can we best safeguard our world from impending challenges? These are the same enduring inquiries that have captivated humanity for centuries. Let us know your thoughts in the comments.